Everybody wants to be the hero who saves the day, and the ultimate fantasy hero image often involves an armed warrior ready to stride into battle against the forces of evil. In recent years, there has been a noticeable uptick in the ultra-militarization of police forces in America, providing police with technology that seems futuristic, almost like something out of a dystopian sci-fi film. This militarization is most apparent in response to protests over black people being killed by police. The media depicts police roaming the streets in riot gear and tanks, and far from unusual aberrants, this imagery becomes normalized. When we think of police in 2020, we don't think of this. We think of this. The line between the military and the police becomes more and more blurred as the years progress. But, no matter our politics, we are all complicit in this movement towards militarization. There are many ways that we, as citizens, are primed into being okay with the formerly scary phenomenon of heavily weaponized police forces. The over-militarization of police, encouraged by easy access to actual military equipment and by the current administration's support, feeds into and enables many police officers to view themselves more as violent, badass soldier heroes rather than helpers and community service providers. Social theorists and psychoanalysts such as Jacques Lacan, Sheldon George, Todd McGowan, and Slavoj Žižek have offered theoretical frameworks for this cultural phenomenon. In this video, we will specifically examine the multiple ways that we as citizens have been primed to accept as normal police militarization through our cultural fascination with CGI superhero films such as Avengers to the way the police are painted as heroes in discourse with phrases like Blue Lives Matter. Over the last few decades or so, police forces across the country have been implementing military-grade weapons and gear into their policing practices as a matter of course. This rapid militarization can be attributed to the Military Surplus Act, which was instituted in 1997 under the Clinton administration. The program sells military-grade weapons and gear to state and local authorities for a fraction of the cost. Police may find it reassuring and even flattering to be viewed as saviors who need and deserve what soldiers need, which are weapons and gear worthy of a fierce and sophisticated hero to fight off the enemy. The American people, however, are not the enemy, even when they break the law when ultra-geared-up police act accordingly rather than de-escalating problems, they come to see excessive force as necessary and as part of their job, which is to do battle with the bad guy or the enemy. Because many cops see some segments of the population as other, black people, Muslim people, immigrants, etc., they are inclined to see them as the enemy with whom we are at war with. But the definition of we has become more and more convoluted in recent years as police have furthered themselves from the average person. The slogan Blue Lives Matter along with the bastardized American flag that police and their supporters fly is a direct response to the Black Lives Matter movement. Blue Lives Matter implies that police officers who are paid to put on a uniform and serve the public are oppressed just as much or even more so than black people. This us versus them sloganeering ignites police officers fantasy that they have a life risking job where they could be killed on the sole basis that they are a cop. This premise does not accord with reality and it does not accord with the police officer's fundamental charge to protect and serve.
When police abuse their power, they're exciting a fantasy of sorts, far from reality. Their desire is realized when sheer joy is exuded from abusing their power. When a police officer smiles after acting militant, their unconscious becomes conscious. Todd McGowan theorizes, For psychoanalysis, fantasy is an imaginary scenario that fills in the gaps within ideology. In other words, it serves as a way for the individual subject to imagine a path out of the dissatisfaction produced by the demands of social existence. This perspective on fantasy can provide an insight into how police view their enemies, also known as the other. Police's path to their fantasy, indeed the key image of their fantasy, is an affirmation in discourse that they are not workers for public, but instead heroes in a war of good against evil. But who are the police really protecting and serving? Philosopher Slavoj Žižek explains that through fantasy, we learn how to desire. This axiom helps to explain the warrior image that many police officers identify with. Police responding to street protests, wearing body armor and carrying military weapons, or driving tank-like vehicles are living out of a fantasy of militarization and reaffirming a desire to be superheroes. It is all too easy for police, feeling misunderstood, persecuted, and constantly in danger to enlarge this fantasy of their heroic role by identifying protesters as their enemies and then doing them harm. Superhero films are some of the most popular movies of our time. Every new release smashes box office records. These films all follow the same archetypal plotline. Good hero defeats the evil, thus restoring order to the community. Such films may not directly be harmful to viewers, but they do accustom their fans to the images of heroes geared up in military style, saving the world from evil, alien others. Overly done CGI is a mainstay of the high budget Hollywood blockbuster. CGI of course stands for computer generated images, which are used in many mediums. In film specifically, CGI is used to create almost anything we could possibly want to see. A key attribute of CGI is that it can be hard to differentiate the real from the digital, but this is where the very form of CGI can become a dangerous taken for granted cultural factor. Media theorist Hugh Mannon explains that the problem with CGI is that it is too technically proficient, too clean, and thus out of sync with a human desire based on lack. There is no breakage or error in CGI, so one could argue that CGI is Lacan's idea of the ideal ego in its purest form which is essentially an ideal sense of perfection that one's ego strives to imitate. Movies have always been watched as an escape from reality. The crucial difference between older forms of analog movie making and computer generated explosions and extreme gear in films is that in CGI films, no human is being hurt and nothing is being risked. When the police hit the streets in extreme gear with military equipment, there is often real danger to human bodies. Ordinary people fearing violence from protesters, and especially young men, the primary audience to whom superhero films are directed, 
may see the police as superheroes in extreme armor and gear as a reassuring notion to their fantasy. In this way, the prevalence of CGI superheroes in films and TV, and even in kids' toys, may pre-desensitize or, in other words, prime us unconsciously to approve or accept movement towards a militarized police state. Cops are frequently praised as heroic figures. Many people accept that police have the most dangerous job in America, yet this view is statistically far from reality. Most day-to-day -day policing isn't dangerous, and many police officers have a distorted view of their job. Police officers actually have the 18th most dangerous job in America, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. By constantly referring to police as heroes and saviors, we are reinforcing the twisted fantasy in which they operate. Police unconsciously know that they will never completely realize their desire or wholeness, but by constantly distancing themselves from the average person through jouissance they inch slightly closer to a wholeness through their warrior cop complex. As Sheldon George explains, Lacan not only acknowledges that in embracing the jouissance that emerges from the other's pain, we move towards some cruelty, but also poses the striking question of whose cruelty is involved here the others, or mine. It is almost certain that we have moved far into some sort of cruelty through the enabling and acceptance of the rapid militarization of police. In the current police system, officers will always have an imaginary fantasy, whether this is conscious to them or not, in which they see themselves as warriors who have to fight off the enemy. Military grade weapons bring their fantasy closer to reality, thus their desire is enabled and heightened. Hyper-realistic CGI battles of good versus evil softens the very scary reality of the police becoming so close to replicating the military, which should warrant nationwide outcry, but it is somehow accepted as normal due to the way police are so often painted as heroes who save the day. It remains to be seen if we will shift away from this corrosive extremism anytime soon, or the multiple ways we are primed to be okay with its blatant cruelty. Without question, we have a long, long way to go.